Most deaf, most deaf. Hey, Cavett Haynes has a great question. I was a little too young to remember this, but uh, he says, Dusty and Lonzo, do y'all remember LAPD Chief Willie Williams? Did, yep. a black chief, did a black chief make a difference in the streets? No. Willie Williams was the same police uh, police captain in Philadelphia when they blew up that, uh, them uh, folks in Philadelphia. Shit, he was a goddamn police department. He was a, When they blew up them brothers and sisters in Good looking out, Isaiah. Good looking out. Much love, Isaiah. When they uh, when Willie went when uh, check check the history books, who was the shit? Who was the uh, chief of police in Philadelphia when they blew up the? I forgot the name of the, the, the organization. It was a black group. They had a whole like New Jack City, but there wasn't no dr- drug situation. It was a, a compound, and they wouldn't let the police in, and they dropped a, dropped a bomb on their asses. That was on, that was the second time America had been bombed by his own people. Uh, that was in Philadelphia, and I think it was '84 or something like that. '85, yeah, 1985 move bombing, M O V E bombing. Right. Move. It was uh, at the Cobbs Creek neighborhood of Philadelphia. Who was the, who was the, uh, who was the uh, police chief of police? Uh, I see a Gregory Sam. I'm looking. Uh, keep talking. Keep talking. I'll find it. I think. I, I think. Um, oh, no, you could be right. Who the police chief was at? Yeah, I think, uh, what's his name? Willie Williams. Willie Williams. I think it was Willie Williams, and that's why they brought him to L.A. because L.A. was on fire when he came here. Damn. Okay. So they saw. Okay. Yeah, he came. He came with a with a serious reputation. He don't. He wasn't taking no shit. He didn't know nothing, but he didn't. You know, he had a reputation. Damn, dude, that's crazy. That, that's the first time I heard of that story. I'm gonna have to go down that rabbit you gotta hole. Be, you got to be old or yeah. something like that. Yeah, Isaiah, and I was about to say this as well, but um, her lawyer was black, Alonzo, uh, but her lawyer was named Charles Lloyd. Um, well, going back to the Soon John Yoon lady who shot uh, Natasha okay. Harlan. Was, what, firm, what law firm was he with? Oh, that could be odd. Uh, now we're all right. Well, keep going. Hey, look that up for me, Isaiah, if you don't mind. I'm going to do it on my end, too, because he could have been part of Cochran's law firm. Right. Okay. Nah, might not have been him, but I think it might have been somebody from his firm. Okay, my bad. Nah, my bad. I knew oh, his yeah. his name kept popping up in uh in the in the news in the news uh uh briefs. Okay. Uh yeah, Willie Williams was the chief of police when the cops was crazy. You damn right. Okay. It <laughs> yeah. Is. Yep. It, it, dude, you know, uh Bernard Parks. LAPD, uh, I can't, I don't know. My interaction with the LAPD has been very, very minimal. Uh, you know, I've been stopped, I've been stopped by them, but I've haven't I've never really dealt with them. Uh, even as close as I am to the 108th Street, I don't really deal with them. I, they don't never give me a problem. So I've had more run-ins with the sheriff than anything else. Okay. What about Tom Bradley? He was uh, the... He was a mayor. He was a mayor for a while, and then uh, I, was he chief of police too? No, no. I'm just curious if he, you know, his story. If you like, what did this? You know, did anything happen during his his tenure? I mean, I was a kid during the Tom Bradley thing. I remember my mama saw him at the airport, and she was all, "Oh my God, Mayor Bradley!" Daddy, like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> my mom was a groupie. <laughs> my mom was a groupie to the, to the mayor. Um. I don't, you know, man. I was, I was, I, I was a little bit before my time, Doc. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Kevin Tucker was the chief when they bombed the move. Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. But hey, uh, we got the fact checkers in the building. They'll definitely get us was, facts. Oh boy, was somewhere around in the. He was somewhere in the vicinity when it happened. Okay. Willie, Willie Williams was. He was either an assistant chief or something like that. He was definitely in the command when that jumped off. He may not have been the one that made made the command, but he was definitely in the hierarchy that was a part of that situation. Mm, okay. Did you see if uh, Homeboy came from uh, from uh, Johnny Cochran's? Uh, no, no, I was still trying to figure out the Willie Williams thing in Philly to see, but yeah, other sports, others not. Now Daryl Gates. Talks, there we go. All right, Daryl Gates. What? Now Daryl Gates. He was a son of a bitch. Yeah, so Williams was the first African American uh, commissioner of the Philadelphia Police Department and the African American first African American chief uh, of the LAPD. So yes, right before LAPD, he was definitely in Philadelphia. So if he was, 
the uh, the commissioner of the police force there, he definitely had something to do with that bombing, right? Right. He definitely was involved. He may not he may have made a command, but he definitely knew what was going on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing on the on the Philly uh, Philly situation. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go down that rabbit hole for sure. Cap, my man, uh, Kevin Hayes says, uh, uh, "Yes, sir, Lonzo. He was next in line in Philly." Okay, so I wasn't too far off. I knew he was involved. He might not have pushed the button, but he damn sure knew what what, what time it was gonna go down. Yep. Yeah. Well, before we move on, Lonzo, I got a few clips I want to play for you throughout the night. Um, but uh, before we move on, I'm going to ask everybody to hit that like button. If you haven't already, just take a quick second just to hit that like. That really, really helps us out. And if this is your first time checking us out, please hit that subscribe button. But um, I got to give props, Lonzo, to this organization. We're going to talk about some grown-ass men and life and stuff right now. But um, I got to give props to this organization out of Detroit. Brothers of New Era Detroit. Detroit. They actually go around pumping gas, loading groceries, and looking after black women moving around Detroit after dark. More power to them. More men like this. More power to them. Love shit like that, man. We need organizations like that in different cities, man. Man, it's gonna take. You know, um, let me let me say this right here. I'm, I'm doing some stuff through the chamber. For those who don't know, I said it a thousand times, I'm going to say it a thousand and one. I'm the president of the Compton Entertainment Chamber of Commerce. And uh, the mayor has me on a program, uh, Bloomberg Harvard Institute. And we have been for the last past three weeks breaking down problems over the cities. In various cities. It's 10 cities. It's uh, I'm sorry, 10 cities, eight people. Okay. And these cities all over the world, not just America. I got We got one in Stockholm. Germany, one in uh, in England, and in doing these classes and these um, Zoom calls, excuse me, it's come apparent that a lot of places around the world got the same problem: homelessness, gangs. That shit is everywhere. All that shit is everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, black. We don't. I think we're the only all black crew. Only all black team, but white folks got the same issues with the same. The kids is acting a fool, uh, trash and homelessness and uh, inflation. The whole everybody got the same problem, and but we came to the conclusion that a lot of these problems cannot and will not be solved just by the politicians and the police. If people don't start stepping up, and like these brothers here. Um, and where, where are they from now? Detroit. Detroit. Brother from Detroit, if they if you see a problem, you got to step up. And as you step up and start making things happen, other brothers will join you. It's like anything else. I've been saying it forever. It, it's, you got to be like Nike. Just do it. If you see a problem, address it, man. You can't go out there with no guns and no knives. How about you going to walk sisters to the car and somebody roll up on you, you're going to blow them away, you're going to jail. But it's just the presence of men around an uh, area that could be a pot potential target, put people in a targeted situation, makes a big difference, especially out of these youngsters. A lot of them ain't going to run up on you. A lot of them, a lot of them nah, they ain't going to run up on you. Now, you got some fools that are then, nah, nah, I'm, I'm, I got to have that. But for the most part, the average one don't want to don't want, don't, don't want to fight. That's why they pick on women in the first place, because they punks. That's why they pick on women and, and youngsters because they punks. They see a grown man out there, they're not going to do nothing. They go, nah, I'm going to go home. I'm going to leave that one alone. Okay? And that's just something that um, I've observed over the last few, over the years. And I see these kind of programs. It reminds me of a um, program they have in, we talked about this before, in uh, in Louisiana, where the dads would go to school. And they had fights every day in school. But all of a sudden, pops show up and the whole attitude of the school changed. Okay? And that's another reason why I say it's important that black men stay in the community. Because when the men are there, the fools have, you know, they got somebody to deal with. When you got a bunch of young, crazy wolves in the pack, and all you got is cubs and female wolves, the young wolves think they can run shit. And that's what we've been dealing with for the last longest. Men, the, a lot of men in the families have been gone. They're out of, they're out of the household. They're doing things. They're in jail. they other places. And you got all these youngsters. There's no guidance. Nobody kicking them in the ass. And sometimes a good kick in the ass is a great form of guidance. I'm a, I'm a firm believer of of um of shoe to add the, the shoe to ass ratio. The shooter shoe to ass ratio should always be implemented implemented when necessary. 
I'm old school like that. But with that not happening, folks think they because you're 13 or 14, you grown. Your mama's smaller, you know, you're taller than your mama, and she really don't want to jump on you. She don't want to hurt you, but you know, it is what it is. And you let you do what you want to do. You come in, she tell you to do something, you don't do it. And I even my my, my family, I remember my, my uncle, he left, and my dad uh was acting as a uh substitute substitute dad for his kids. He had four or five boys. And in any given day, he never had to kick no ass because mama kicked enough ass by herself. Okay. Mama wasn't no joke. Mama wasn't no joke. But every once in a while, pops had to go over there and do some reinforcing. And uh, between him and the neighbor, kept everybody out of penitentiary. Meanwhile, I'm watching the whole thing. Like, I don't want to get in that kind of shit. You know, so it, it, it has all kinds of effects. It has all kinds of effects. And you see, Men team up on some youngsters. Look, boy, you're not going to disrespect your mom in no way, form, or fashion. I don't care what you think. How big you think you are? Don't make me come over here because I'm going to come over here heavy. What you going to do? All right, Mr. So-and-so. All right, Uncle So-and-so. And they know they will come. So that's the kind of thing you have to have in place to keep things in order. And I'm proud of these brothers in Detroit to stepping up to keep these, keeping the community safe, especially these ladies. Yeah, yeah, and you know what I love? Someone in the comments said, uh, Kavit said, yeah, I saw a video of New Era. That's the name of the group in uh, Detroit. He says, I saw a video of New Era stepping up aggressive to tow truck drivers running scams with property management on single mothers in Detroit. I love shit like uh, that, man. Yeah, man. That's some buster-ass shit right there. That's some buster-ass shit. You go, somebody parked their car, you got a nickel, a little security guard and a tow truck driver, peace up. And the tow truck driver, I mean, the uh, security guard might get $35, $40. Tow truck driver towed the car on some bullshit. Now you caught your car's in the impound. And as soon as they hook it up, it's $100. I don't give a damn. It's $100. To make the yard, it might be two or three. You're already, you're already, your shit's already tight. And now they get to sell your car for sale for 30 days. So, yes, yes. Run, skip that bullshit, Okay. They they tried to I mean, they, they snatched my Cadillac one night, man. My my good car, they snatched my car was in the empire. I was gone. I came back 15 minutes later, my truck was gone. Damn. It happened to me twice. It happened to me twice. It happened to me uh a few years ago, but it happened to me last year. I was at a hotel taking care of some business, came back out, my shit was gone. Three hundred dollars to get the next day I got it. Three hundred dollars before noon. Three hundred dollars. It's a hustle, man. And see, in the city, the city allows them to do that. They make money on it. Because you can't, you know, tow trucks, there's somebody on the lot that actually makes the phone call to the tow truck. I mean, we got two cars in the lot. So he's going to get paid. He's a spotter. Okay? You can't, uh, the owner of a building, most time they at the time to go home, they don't have time for that. But they got a little nuclear security guard out there. He, You know, and no disrespect to security guards, but, you know, some of them be on the scandalous tip. And uh, they call them up, you know, to get their little change. And that's why the fees be so high. Everybody getting paid, including the city. Including the city. They support the efforts of the of the crookedness. Uh, if you go downtown L.A., now that's the difference. But if you go downtown L.A. at 4 o'clock, tow trucks be lined up. Okay. They line up. If, you, if it's time at 4 at 401, they haul in cars. They stay around the corner waiting. Okay, be four or five. I've seen them do it. Four or five tow trucks at four o'clock. They say, move your cars. Okay, it's time to go. I don't like it, but I understand it. $100 yeah, a day in, in your what you, crazy. you said $100 a day if you get impounded? That's, that sounds a little cheap, right? No, it's, it's I don't know. If it's, you know what? Oh, you mean a day if it gets set, if it has to sit on the lot, you mean? If it's $100 a day. I, gotcha. you, I, I had a car stolen one time. Somebody stole my one of my trucks in front of my house, four o'clock in the morning. I just missed the guy stealing it. I heard I heard him outside fumbling. By the time I got got up out of my days, because I was half asleep, my truck was gone. It was a white van sitting in the middle of the street, right next to where my truck would, would normally sit at. I called the police. Police show up while I'm doing the, the police report. The cops radio talks about a, a black Chevy truck involved in a robbery. Then these, these guys stole somebody's um, GPS device. That's before they had all the GPSs in the car. Make a long story short, that was on a Saturday night. They found my truck Sunday. I picked it up Monday. 
by the time they got through, I was out of grand. It was just enough damage not to qualify for for the deductible to pay for the damage. And the tow truck and the other shit, it was like 300 and some almost 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 400 dollars it was like it was like 850 okay 850 and i got i got my truck they found it on saturday night i picked it up monday 850 damn so, yeah. you just got to take it you just got to take it like a champ i nigga, for for uh for 50 dollars you could have you could have rented the damn truck shit i'd have gave you the keys <laughs> but yeah man, man. they got scam dog you got cold scams everywhere. And when, 